I've just received the custom made stainless steel braided brake lines for the BMW R80 and I thought it would be a good idea to just go over how you actually measure the correct length and how you choose the right fittings. And this is already part two of a four part series in the last episode. We've talked about whether you should actually upgrade to stainless steel braided brake lines and then in the two that follow I'm going to show you how to install them and then how to refill the whole system with new brake fluid. But first let's see how you actually determine the right length and the right fittings for your bike because if you're customizing your bike you're probably going to change the handlebars or like I did lower the front forks and the brake lines most likely won't fit anymore or they're often so old that it's actually good to change them anyways. I first show you how to determine the right length and then we go over the fittings. All of the shops that I had a look at require the same measurements so measuring from the same point A to point B but please double check with the shop where you plan to get your brake lines from to see if they have the same method. I'm going to show you everything on the front wheel of the BMW. Here it has two calipers but in the back it has a drum brake so we don't need a brake line but it's basically the same approach for the front wheel and the back wheel. So the first thing you need to check is which components you have on your bike and more specifically which connection points. They're basically just two options. You either have an internal thread or an external thread. Let me show you in the BMW. Let's start right here at the top with the master cylinder. For master cylinders it's very common that they have an internal thread that works with a banjo fitting that looks like this and a hollow screw so the brake fluid can pass through it. And if we then move down to the caliper, on the BMW there's already a metal brake line installed that has an external thread. And with those two things in mind we can actually now get an accurate measurement because for banjo fittings like right here at the top you want to measure from the center of the hole. And then for external threads like at the bottom you want to measure to the end of the thread. And to get an accurate measurement, it's actually helpful to have a tube, something like this, or I did it with a wire, but a tube is better because it gives you a more accurate feeling for the routing. Now, before we start to measure, one very, very crucial thing is to jack your bike up until the front wheel is off the floor and the forks are fully extended. Otherwise, you might end up with a brake line that is too short. And then if you hit a bumpy road and your front forks fully extend, it might actually be under stress and get damaged. Now that the bike is up here, make sure that the brake lever is set to the position where you want it to be in afterwards, because otherwise, if you move it down, then your thread will be like a centimeter or two centimeters lower so make sure that that is set up correctly next you need some duct tape and a marker and you just take the tube place it right here at the thread and mark the center point of the thread on the tube without moving that center point you take the duct tape and then tape the tube onto the master cylinder. In the next step, we have to think about the routing. So let's start with the bike's right side. While routing the brake lines, also think about brackets that you might want to put in place, or you know that there were brackets on the original setup. Just try to get it as close as possible to the final setup. So you see if it's gonna rub anywhere or if it's gonna be too tight or something like that. So think about brackets at this point as well. On the BMW, we have a mounting point on the triple clamp right here. So I'm gonna use that as well. Just eyeball it where it's gonna be and then it moves down and then through this hole like this. So that is probably how I want the brake line to run. Once you're happy with the routing, one last thing we need to check before we actually take the length is that you can steer all the way from left to right without the line getting pinched or getting under tension. So that looks good. So we just hold this right next to the thread here, take the pen and then mark the end of the thread because it's an external thread at the bottom right here. And now we can go over to the bench and just see how long the first brake line is. With the marks on the tube, we're now gonna take a tape measure and just place that flat on the workbench. And then you take the first, the top mark, place it at zero, take the tube along the tape measure until you find the second mark and then you have your measurement for the first brake line. Onto the second brake line. For the top, it's basically the same. You can reuse the first mark and just place it in the same spot. For the second one, it's a little bit trickier because we need to end up on the other side. So I'm just gonna run it right behind the headlight, behind the fork sleeves. And it's also gonna be held by a little bracket right here. And then go into this bracket at the bottom, pull it through until we have the play that we need. All right, now just check if that works. Nice, that should be fine. And with that, we're just gonna mark it right here at the end of the thread.
Next, we need to determine which fittings we need. And if you have an internal thread, like here at the master cylinder, you're gonna run a banjo fitting. There are also fittings for brake lines that screw directly into an internal thread, but I've never seen that on a master cylinder, so a banjo fitting it is. To select the right banjo fitting, we need to determine two parameters. The first is the inside diameter of the banjo fitting. And for that, you just gonna measure the inside diameter of the thread. For the Brembo PS16, it's a 10 millimeter banjo fitting. The second thing that we need to determine is the bend angle of the fitting. And that was the much harder task for me because if you've never had a banjo fitting in your hand, how are you supposed to know what a 40 degree bend angle looks like? And especially how that influences the rest of the brake line. But here's a little trick for you. What I've done to get a better understanding of the shape and the size of the fittings is I've made a template for each of the different band angles. And those were my first ones. They were horribly off, but then I found a way how you can get a much more precise template. And that is if you can find a technical drawing. I actually found mine on eBay listings. The vendors just uploaded those with their offerings. So what you're gonna do once you have the technical drawing, you're gonna screenshot it. And it's important that you have the measurements on there because then you can scale the picture until you have the correct measurements on your phone. So if in the picture, something is like 10 millimeters, then you scale it until it's actually 10 millimeters on your screen as well. And then from there, you just take the measurements and copy them onto a piece of cardboard. That will give you much more accurate templates. And those have helped me a lot because I could instantly rule out the 90, the 75, and the 60 degree bends. In the end, I went with a straight one for the one on the right side and a 20 degree bend for the one on the left side. Now, what is worth noting at this point is that the two and a half centimeters that come after the Benjo fitting are actually solid. So the angle of the Benjo fitting has a big impact on how the brake line is gonna run. As you've probably already noticed, it is very possible to have two Benjo fittings connected to the same mounting point. You just need a longer hollow screw. And talking about hollow screws, knowing the screw size is the last thing that you need for your Benjo fittings. And with the inside diameter of the master cylinder thread, you already know which screw size you need. In case of the Brembo PS16, that is nine millimeters, so we need a M10 screw. But when it comes to these screws, there are different pitch sizes available, but I don't really have a good and easy method of how you can measure the inside thread pitch. So what I've done was I have first just taken a regular M10 bolt, which has a normal pitch of 1.5 millimeters, and I've tried to put that in there. That didn't fit. So that was out of the question, and I now had to make an educated guess. Fortunately, I ended up with a right fitting screw, which is M10 10 times one. And I did that by measuring the external thread right here at the bottom because measuring an external thread is much easier. Let me show you how. With your caliper, measure from one high spot to the fifth next one. Measuring that way will give you a much more accurate reading than just measuring from one to the next. So now you take your measurement and divide that by the number of low spots that are in between. In this case, the measurement is four and we have four low spots, so the pitch is one. A standard M10 thread would measure six over the four low spots. So that is six divided by four is 1.5. And that is how you get the pitch for your external thread. So with that, we also already know the pitch for the bottom thread, which is super nice. And now we just have to measure the diameter of the thread, which is 9.8. So it's also a M10 thread. So we already have that. And the last thing that we need to determine now is the bend angle of the bottom fitting. For that, I've just used a simple triangular ruler to get a good estimate. And in the end, I decided to go with a 60 degree bend. Now that you have all of the details, you can search for a shop that will make them for you. And I know that there are screwable fittings out there, so you could technically make your own. But when it comes to brake lines, I would always opt for the professionally made ones. I've ordered the ones for the BMW at this shop. I'm going to link them down below because I was very impressed with their quality and their fulfillment time. So I can definitely recommend them to anyone who's in Germany. I know that they also ship internationally, but it's probably much cheaper if you just find one in your country. But what I wanted to show you on their website is how their customization process works, because that is very cool. For the BMW, we need two brake lines, but we'll just do it for the longer one. So at the top, we need a 10 millimeter Benjoy fitting with a 20 degree bend. Make sure that you select the right diameter, because if you go further down, you can actually find the same looking Benjoy fitting but with a bigger hole in it. What is cool in this shop, you can actually choose the color of the fitting. So I chose black to make it match with all of the rest on the handlebars. Next up, we want to choose the line length. For this one, it's 77 centimeters. And after that, you can choose the color of the sleeve. Obviously, we're going to go with a classic black. And now we can choose the fitting at the bottom. And for the BMW, let's scroll down quite a bit because we need to go to the fittings with the internal threads. The one we are looking for has a 60 degree bend and a M10 thread with a one millimeter pitch. And then lastly, we have to select the color as well. And there's only stainless steel for this one, but that's no problem because we have the little metal brake line, so that fits perfectly. Now we just have to add it to the cart. And then a few days later, you hold your nicely looking brake lines 
in your hand. So that is a very smooth process. In the next episode, we're gonna install these bad boys on the BMW. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.